Hi, it's me again, Richard and Phil, and I'm happy to talk with you again, and I'm going to be talking some more about this notion of the forecast being always wrong, where always is in quote marks to give the general idea that we can't count on it being right, but of course, sometimes we make a forecast and what actually happens is exactly what's forecast, although the general rule is it is not. I showed you some uh, slides previously or, uh, about how the, our cost estimates of creating projects was uncertain, but now let's look at predictions of project demand. So this is another class of possibilities where we can have um, uh, deviate from what's actually happening. This one is one of the many uh, predictions of the price of oils in a particular uh, timeline between here now uh, 2004 and uh, 10 years later on. And what we have here is an official projection, which is this line that's green, and that's the low one, and then there's the red one, which is the high, and the best forecast is that blue one, where it's supposed to be around $40 a barrel, as predicted in 2004. The big line up here, is at the top, is what was actually happening. And you can see that the line, the prediction, was not only not within the range of what was originally predicted, but it was about twice as much, and it went up to over $100 a barrel in that period, which is only six years ahead. So the expert agency had been doing that, was saying, well, it's going to be in this range, it's a reasonably tight range, uh, 40 to $60 perhaps, and in fact, what actually happened was terrifically different from uh, what was occurred. Now, I've just shown you this one particular graph, but the fact is that oil price predictions have, are notorious for being different than what actually happens. And you can appreciate why, because first of all, there have been wars in this area, in the Middle East and elsewhere, which changed things. There have been huge economic developments, the rise of China, the uh, its appetite for oil has raised the prices enormously. And then, not yet shown on this graph, but you will know it, which is the development of fracking, which has really reduced the prices of oil considerably, so that, in general, the forecasts of what uh, will happen to the price of oil have not been correct, systematically not been correct, not just by the average person of the street, but by the international agencies and national agencies charged with projecting the price of oil, it doesn't happen the way they say it will. And I'm not blaming them. They're doing the best they can. But there are things that happen around them that change the possibilities. Here's a different one. Here is a projection for, in the United States, the production of wind energy uh, installations. So the blue line was a uh, forecast, and it seemed perfectly reasonable. It showed a active growth, and that was uh, considered to be fairly aggressive at that time. And then what happened? Actually, the red bars show the actual amount that was installed in those years, and it got to be easily twice what happened in most of the years except the last one. What happened here? Well, what I believe happened as the explanation was that somewhere in the government they passed regulations, or in state government they passed regulations encouraging the use of wind, wind energy. So people responded. This was unexpected by the people who made the forecast originally, but it happened. This is the kind of thing that does occur. Sometimes it leads to an increase, sometimes it leads to a de decrease, but the thing is that there are changes. Let me go to another one. This time it's for water use in a sector of England called Anglia, done by the Anglia water people. And the large line in the middle here, the black line going straight up, is the projected demand. And they said, well, you know, we're not sure about this, so let's go basically plus or minus 10 percent gives us a reasonable range. Some other people earlier had a more aggressive uh, line going up, but basically it was continued use associated with more people and 
uh, more washing machines and whatever you have, but it was a growth pattern. Now remarkably, what actually happened was the water use decreased. And then it, at some point it increased a little bit or up to what was expected and then went down again. It was different. Now, it's just another example of how the forecast and the actuality is different. What happened here? It wasn't they stopped uh, washing or things like that, but what I believe happened was that the water company decided to raise the prices uh, to finance new facilities, good thing, but people said, ah, if I'm paying more, I'm going to pay attention to my leaks, and in fact, in many water supply systems, about a third of the actual use of water is, goes into leaks because uh, the faucets drip, because you, uh, the mains were built 50, 100 years ago and they leak, and because people don't bother to save water by installing low flush toilets or what have you. So it's in fact uh, quite easy for them to decrease the of water that they use or the water that goes through their households or their industries um, if they have the right incentive to do it. Same thing happened in Boston when they built a large uh, sewage pro uh, pro uh, protection unit in Boston Harbor. They spent about six billion dollars for it. They raised the prices. My prices went up from about fifty dollars a year to about five hundred dollars a year and like other people I installed all kinds of water savings devices in my house and the water usage in Boston went down also. But that wasn't anticipated by the engineering experts, by the experts that were thinking about it, the making the projection as the uh, water system was being developed. So again, you have a situation where um, the forecast and the actuality don't match. You might ask, how do I get these kinds of uh, uh, graphs? And this is, gives you an exercise you can do for yourself. I ask my students to choose any topic they want to, to look for a series of forecasts for the future and to compare them with what happened. And this particular one was done by one student, the others were done by other students, but you can test my uh, supposition, my argument that the demands are not as predicted by choosing a topic that you want yourself. The uh, sales of the uh, Ford pickups, the uh, introduction of electric vehicles, whatever you might be interested in, you can see what forecasts were done five, ten years ago, what has now been happening, and make the comparison yourself. Sometimes the forecast will be a good indicator is what actually happened. But in general, these are the kind of results that my students bring up to me when I give them that exercise. These are the kind of uh, graphs, pictures, diagrams that you can have um, for yourselves, create for yourselves. Uh, uh, so why is it that the expert forecasts are often wrong? What is happening? The general answer is because things happen. What things? Well, there might be technological advances, uh, that you don't need to do things the way you did them before, or that there's fracking, which made the price of oil cheaper, for example. There are weather, weather patterns. That accounts maybe for some of the increase in variability in the use of water in, in England in that particular example. There are economic crises. The um, the economic situation isn't so good and people don't buy as much and they, uh, things are cheaper or more difficult. Things happen. That is the lesson from today. Thank you very much.